The concerned citizens of this nation have a few questions that they need their president to respond to. During the president's 16th COVID-19 update, cabinet decided that due to the increase in the number of cases, the whole country would enter level three lockdown with inter-regional movements restricted and a nationwide curfew between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., with the exception of the Orongo region, where a five-month lockdown was finally eased. Concerned citizens want to know, what exactly is going down between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. that we are not privy to? And how are gatherings still limited to 10, but overseas flights can come in as of September 1st, and face-to-face -face schooling will resume? I just don't know anymore. Lawyer Richard Metcalf was representing a Walfish Bay-based client who decided to take government on for the excessive lockdown imposed on the Irongo region. The problem pertaining to my clients wanting to sue government over the lockdown was that it applied specifically to Walfish Bay, Swakopmund and Arundas and the rest of the country was excluded. Now, the fallacy pertaining to that was that there was testing en masse in specifically Wolfish Bay, and it appeared as if figures were being produced and or fabricated in order to bolster the nonsense that Wolfish Bay was the epicenter of the epidemic logic and common sense dictated that if you test in all large centers you are going to get the statistics the way you want them because of the predominance of population it was also stated on many occasions that these were fabricated statistics and that if Vintuk for instance had been testing on mass like Wolfish Bay, mm -hmm. then the statistics would surpass those of Wolfish Bay. Time has proven that this is correct. As far as the lockdown was concerned, the Wolfish Bay, Swakopmund and Arundas were subjected to a five month lockdown. It destroyed businesses, it destroyed the economy. In Swakopmund, most hotels and most guest houses have simply closed. There's been a mass loss of employment and all one has to do is to walk around Swakopmund and you will see all the empty businesses, all the empty premises which are advertised for to let and the same applies to Wallfish Bay. There's mass unemployment which has been created by this ridiculous lockdown where, with the utmost respect, the implementation thereof is absolutely clueless and unorganized. I've stated previously that the figures are artificially inflated. It's common cause that courts go into lockdown, only accused and witnesses are allowed to attend court. Uh, how can you then allege that justice is open to all and for the public to see what is happening? It is my perception, and I'm sure it's the perception of many other lawyers, that the lockdown has indeed been utilised to stifle progression on cases and or use it as a lame excuse like in the fish rot case where the anti-corruption commission state openly under cross-examination that they're unable to get to Wolfish Bay in order to complete their investigation. This is absolute nonsense. They have an extremely competent investigator who heads the ACC offices in Swakopmund in the form of Mr. Walter Kurtz who is an extremely competent investigator and who has trained his staff extremely well. Whilst we are foes in court with people of the likes of Mr. Kurtz and his staff, I have only the greatest admiration for them out of court. In 2009, we had swine flu. It affected over 8,000 people and we had four recorded deaths. The problem 
with the death statistic is that it is a manufactured statistic where people who die, for instance, from a gunshot wound to the head and are certified as that being the cause of death and or a heart attack and or a stroke, etc., they get such death certificate from the attending medical practitioner. And when the body goes to the mortuary, then a typed death certificate is produced, alleging that the cause of death was COVID-19. Absolute nonsense. This is fraud of the first degree. The best that could be said is that the corpse presented with signs of COVID-19, but that this was not the cause of death. This is an absolute fabrication. It's pulling the wool over the eyes of the citizens of Namibia. It evokes anger and one puts questions over it as to what is the actual agenda behind this. What has also been done is that our fundamental human rights as contained in the constitution have been stripped from us, freedom of movement, freedom of association, the right to work. These fundamental rights have simply been stripped away from Namibians under this state of emergency. I asked lawyer Richard Metcalf what we as very concerned citizens that are unhappy with government's knee-jerk reactions to the coronavirus outbreak can do about the loss of our civil liberties. What the public needs to do in this regard is to start questioning government. What is their agenda behind the inflation of these statistics? And why are the statistics being inflated? And what benefit are we obtaining for this? And if we are obtaining a benefit, how is that being passed on to the public other than paying for the public service salaries? Uh, these are the questions that we need to know because 99% of us have taken a knock in terms of the economy and a very bad knock. And a lot, at least 20% of people have lost their jobs as a result of COVID-19. Is there any agenda to ameliorate these losses and the loss on the economy by plowing the money which is received from foreign donors and a World Health Organization back into the economy in order to alleviate the suffering? Or is this money just going into the usual suspects' pockets? And I say this unapologetically, we need to know. Uh, that is an absolute fundamental right of the public, is the need to know, which must be assuaged by the government in power. They cannot govern us in secret and expect that we must swallow everything that is pumped out at us pertaining to COVID-19 and expect them to be believed by us. Their credibility is at an all-time low and the public is simply sick and tired of the nonsense which is peddled and there's no reason, cogent reason, for lockdowns, restrictions and destruction of the economy. The concerned citizens of this country are woke now. I came across a Facebook page, Namibia Liberty Defenders, and saw how activist Siska Howard gave a fresh perspective on the more than 700 million Namibian dollars budgeted for the fight against Corona that government recently announced it had already spent 80% of. She did her own calculations and posted this video. I came across this article um, in the Republican, so it's in Afrikaans. We they speak about the coronavirus, 80% of the budget has already been spent. Um, and the budget that they allocated for the corona fight um, is 727 million Namibian dollars. Have you any idea how massive that is? That's a big amount of money. And um, they've already spent 576 million of this budget. 
and they talk about that they've spent it. It's for personal protection wear, it's for facilities, and for hand sanitizers and wash and, and cleaning products. It's nothing more than the flu would have anyway had in Namibia. So it's not like the hospitals are overflowing, the state hospitals and that. So it's just the normal run of the mill. Um, it goes on to say that the quarantine facilities and the logistics around the COVID fight. So I did a little calculation by myself. Now this is, I'm going to talk retail prices. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the budget and I'm, I'm going to give it to you um, in the video separately as well. So what I've gone and said is, let's have a look at what we could have done with that money. Let's, let's just take what they've said explicitly at what they've mentioned here. Okay. So first of all, protection clothing. So that would, I imagine, include a mask. That would include those blue protection clothing. So I did a quick search, just an essay. This is retail. Remember, this is not wholesale prices. If they were to give each and every Namibian 10 masks, that's 2.5 million people, and they give each of those people 10 masks, that includes the children, that includes everyone. Every single person in Namibia gets 10 disposable masks. That would have cost the government 112 million Namibian dollars. Let's take it further. Um, according to Wikipedia, we have about 6,800 um, physicians and nurses, healthcare workers in the country. So let's say the government gave each one of those 6,800 people one protective wear set at retail, which is about 150%. That means they would have spent only 1 million Namibian dollars. Let's take it further. They've done to date 55,596 tests. Again, let's assume that each one of those tests costs 850 Namibian dollars, which is what you would pay if you were to go for your private test or your medical aid base. Now you've got to bear in mind of those tests, some people have private medical aid. So it's not even that the government had to pay for that. That would mean we would have spent 47 million on the tests. Then they go on and they say, okay, but we've spent the money on hand sanitizers. Um, so let's say one of these little foot sanitizers and a five liter bottle of cleaning material. That would cost the government about 1,000 per set. Again, retail. This is not wholesale. This is just retail. This is if you were to go to checkers and buy it. Let's say they've given out um, 50,000 units. That's massive. 50,000 units of this. That means at 50,000 individual places, they would have placed some of these units. That would have cost the government um, 50 million Namibian dollars. Okay, let's take it further. Quarantine facilities. Now, I've assumed the government has placed 3,000 people in a quarantine facility for 14 days at 1,000 Namibian dollars per night. That would have cost the government 42 million. Okay, are you still with me? This gives us a total of 252 million. Now I've exaggerated. I've gone and said they've looked after the country, they've spent that money to give it um, to each and every person, as they've now said in, in their brief, they've spent this money. So that's, that's a big amount. Now we're sitting at 252 million Namibian dollars. Now my question is, what happened to the rest? There's a 300 million that's gone. And remember, we received 100 million from the USA. This is not anything other than their budget. This is the governmental budget. Now, could they have spent 300 million on tracing people and managing people? Is that even possible? In my personal opinion, no. It takes a phone call to trace somebody. It's not like they had to pay extra salaries. Yes, maybe a little bit of s and -Ts, but the government's already paying the salaries of these healthcare workers. And they're not paying for the pri private people. They're only paying for the people that work in state. Do you understand the amount of money that the government has spent on the fight against COVID-19? I don't believe there's any fight regarding this virus. I believe 
that money has gone into Range Rovers and into holiday homes and into um, overseas bank accounts. That money is gone. This whole thing, this economic downfall that they've placed Namibia in, sits squarely on the shoulders of our president, who was caught asleep at the wheel when he was supposed to get the country ready. He did nothing. The only thing Hagi did was to impose lockdown upon lockdown upon lockdown upon lockdown. I mean, it's a double standard. You can't go on the one hand and say, I support what the WHO say. And then the minute they say lockdown doesn't work, then you stand back and say, oh, no, but we're going to continue with that. How does that make any sense to put Namibia into a negative economic growth after we've already been a sinking ship? For something that doesn't work. I mean, for every case, I'm sure they get help from overseas. Where does that money go? Do you understand the difference they could have made? They could have put in up facilities, proper health facilities. In Namibia, we've only got 13 ventilators. That's 260,000 Namibians per ventilator. How in the world are we going to manage a pandemic with 13 ventilators? At inflated prices, a ventilator costs $255,000, Namibian dollars. So for a further 3 million, we could have had double the ventilators. Now spend another 3 million and we could have had hospital beds. Where's the money gone? And just look at the pitiful manner in which our people are being buried. Yeah, two, two inside again. Two more. Two more. Oh, it's okay. Step, huh? step, just step on it. Yeah. The other side, put, put each other there. Yeah, put each other there. Another very concerned citizen, Ronnie Adams, took to social media to rally Namibians against the lockdowns and the cases of corruption which our country has been devastated by. Check this out. Hi Namibians, um, I've just uh, heard the latest um, speech from Aki and uh, like all of you, I was very anxious to hear what he's going to say today. Uh, we were all hoping that he would do the right thing, but once again, uh, he just showed again that... Um, he and the Swapu government is incapable of running this country. Um, Aki, I'm asking you, uh, when you fought for this country and, and you took over, was it your um, intention to, to rape and steal everything? That's, there's nothing left. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Namibia is on the brink of bankruptcy, already bankrupt. So is that Swapu's intention to now also those that still have something to, to bankrupt them and um, so you can rule that we come and beg for food or, or whatever. I don't know your your thing, what what's behind this whole thing, or is it money? Are you getting money for each, uh, for each infected person? I don't know, um, but we would like answers. And um, Namibians, this isn't just about COVID, it's about the whole corruption. And we are sick and tired of it. 500 million down the drain for COVID. What did you do, government? We want answers. What did you do? You did absolutely nothing. That's what you did. 30 years you had a chance to build the best country in Africa, but you had to come and rape and plunder and steal for your own pockets the Swapu government. Maybe you started with good intentions, but obviously uh, once money gets uh, exchange hands then uh, your your mind uh, doesn't matter about the people anymore so this message I'm urging the whole of Namibia every Namibian we need to stand up now this is not gonna end if we don't do something now so I'm asking you uh, we need to protest from Monday every single town in Namibia, get in your car, 
go into your main streets, put on your flags and your banners and stuff on your cars, and from 1 to 1.30 or 1 to 2, go in there, ride up and down the main streets, honk your horn, everything, um, so we can show this government that we're sick and tired, or like we call it hatful, I think you know what that means, Haki. Um, so this is now the only way that uh, I think we, we, the people of this country, can stand up to this rotten government that's been doing nothing for the people. There's so much you could have done, but yet you got to sell our country to China that there's going to be nothing left for our children. So please, Namibians, from Monday, get into Independence Avenue, get into your main roads, uh, go up and down the street with your banners. Let's show the government that we are tired. This COVID, we've grown people. And uh, yeah, so we can decide for ourselves. This is the land of the free and the brave, and I'm asking you to be brave now so we can fight for our freedom because uh, what's happening now is we in jail for a virus that kills less than 1% of the people. So no, there's no need for no more lockdown. We are all big, grown-up people. We can decide for ourselves and for our children what's going to happen to them. No more nonsense. So we want answers. We want to know where all that money we went. Why hasn't the, the, the hospitals been upgraded? Why hasn't the schools been done anything? Where's that 500 million? We want answers and we want it now. And we're not going to stop with this until we get answers. So um, please, Namibians, now's our chance. So for the next... Un Unless lockdown gets stopped or something, we have to do this. We have to show the government that we cut for and we want answers for all the money wasted, all our resources going to China, going to other places, yet the money goes into the government's pockets. So let's get from Monday, this Monday coming, from one to two, go up and down your streets with your banners, and uh, let's show that, that we are together in this and we want our freedom back. Causing great concern for some citizens, particularly our brothers and sisters of the Paler Persuasion, were Minister of Defence, retired Rear Admiral Peter Hafeni Vilo's remarks at a recent military exercise. Here's what the minister said that had people catching feelings. There will always be squabbles within a family, but you do not invite the enemy into your house just because you are angry with your brother. You must have noticed that some of them were even gloating when government recently lost the court case against the Namibia Employers Federation and others in its attempt to protect jobs for our people and maintain economic stability. These are people that are fixated in seeing Black governments fail. People will tell you that things were better under our party. Program director, ladies and gentlemen, as government, we admit that conditions are difficult. Yes, but the truth is that we did not lock out the world. The world locked us out. Now, whether tourists arrive on our shores depends very much on what happens in their countries of origin and the rest of the world than what happens in Namibia. The same goes in respect of the exports of our minerals, fisheries, and other economic and commercial relations with our trading partners. The reason I'm telling you this is because there is a concerted effort to infiltrate your ranks. Those that are advocating for regime change know that the Defense Force is the last bastion and the most important pillar of our nation. Everything 
else rest upon your strength. If you collapse, the rest will crumble. Therefore, you are expected to be vigilant against the subversive and neo-colonial attempts to reverse the gains of our independence. We should not allow ourselves to be misled by political opportunists, by demagogues, and self-seeking business leaders. What do you think will happen to you and I when those that are in control of the economy also gain political control? You answer that for yourself. The comments on this post on social media read as follows. Arthur Gotts posted, Your ministry gobbles up 9.7% of our national budget as opposed to the 0.096% allocated to the ACC. Do you really think an imaginary enemy is 101 times more threatening to our national welfare than corruption, especially in the light of most recent events? There is no question that your ministry is in the front lines when it comes to corruption and wasteful expenditure. Ziggy Henser posted, this sounds like you, sir. When this ship goes down and no taxes to cover your salary, please, a person of your stature should speak more sense. And Rachel noted, no social distance and even more than 10 people. Do the rules only apply to certain people? And with that, it's a wrap. Stay woke with It's a Wrap by following us on our social media pages. It's a wrap Nam on Insta, It's a wrap Namibia on YouTube, and It's a wrap with Erica Gebhardt on Facebook. You can also catch the live stream on Facebook on One Africa TV, Sunday nights at half past seven. One Africa TV, Moss. It just gets better.